clap with me. Good. Yeah. Cut the room in half, okay? Keep clapping. Don't stop. Don't stop. Right here, we're going to split the room in half. So you guys that are in the gray area, you're going to have to make a choice of which side you want to be on, but it's okay. It doesn't matter. So this half of the room is going to keep on clapping. Keep on clapping. This side on four, I'd like for you to stop. One, two, three, and stop. Good job. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Now on the count of four, I want this side to make up your own clap. You're going to improvise the rhythm based on this tempo. One, two, ready, and go. Excellent. On four, we go back to the pulse. And one, two, three, and four. And go. Good job. Now if you guys turn, you guys are the pulse keepers, so keep that going. And on four, we'll stop over here. One, two, three, and four. Good job. Get ready. Get ready. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. One, two, and make up your clap. Excellent. On four, we go back to the pulse. One, two, three, and pulse. And good. Good job. Just bring that down a little bit. And on the count of four, I'd like for everybody to make up their own rhythm. Are you ready? One, two, ready, and go. Beautiful. On four, we'll go back to the pulse. And one, two, three, and and a little bit softer. So, it all started before I was born. Tossing and turning in my mother's belly and responding to her heartbeat. She would walk and I would float, and she would dance, and I would respond. Not that I really had a choice. It was the rhythm. I was responding to the stimulus, which was rhythm. So at two years old, I was given my favorite toy, wooden hammer. <laughs> so. My wooden hammer at that time took me on an exploration of sound that I and my parents would probably never forget. I was on a mission to strike every surface that I possibly could. My father was a lawyer. Lawyers keep files, and files go into boxes. You see, a mere 50 years ago, uh, there was no cloud. See. There was only paper and other pieces of paper to put the paper in, and then you put the paper into a cardboard box. So my father had dozens of boxes, and I soon discovered these boxes in our garage, and I noticed how they sounded different. The half-empty boxes sounded different than the full boxes, and the completely empty boxes sounded different than the full boxes. And so I set them up, and there we go. I was a 23-pound little two-year-old boy having fun with the science of sound. I was completely unaware of any sense of discomfort in my hands. I would often play with my hands, sometimes with my hammer. Uh, it was kind of like a, a dancer that doesn't realize she's torn the skin off of her toes until she comes off stage kind of a thing. I was connected to the moment, connected to the moment. I was also completely unaware that there were other cultures around the world who understood the secrets and the power 
of rhythm far better than I did. Unaware that other cultures around the world had their own wooden hammer, their own drum, their own rhythm instrument, which was created for the sole purpose of creating community and transforming its people. So I began my rhythm journey. I joined a band. I joined another band, joined a third band, and continued my, my journey. And as I was hammering away on the drums, night after night, and my drums took me to just about every state in the country and beyond, I felt like something was missing. I knew something was missing, and that was connection. Something I feel that we're all missing today, a sense of connection to each other. See, I was playing for people, but I wasn't connecting with people. Big difference. I believe that we are plugged in, but we are not connected. Kind of like the lights are on, but not quite sure if anybody's home kind of thing. So I just decided to take my passion for rhythm and people and to do something positive with it. I wanted to be a difference maker. I wanted to make a difference with people who wanted to make a difference. I wanted to be a creator of unity and common purpose. I wanted to be a creator of community. You see, this is what cultures all over the world have been teaching for hundreds and hundreds of years, is that everybody plays a part. Everybody has a voice. And to do that, I had to give everybody a drum. I had to give everybody a voice. It's important. Everyone plays a part. Think about the tragedies that have happened in our communities, in our schools, in recent years, as a result of isolation. Feeling apart from, rather than feeling apart of. See, that's a great problem I feel that we have in our society. And we can use our strengths, our skills, our passions to change that. We can be connectors at any level. I feel like we owe a great debt of sincere gratitude to the cultures who have come before us and shown us the power of rhythm and the power of community. The Choctaw, the Pueblo, Cherokee, Creek Indians, and other Native American tribes, uh, the ethnic groups of West Africa, Susu, Malinke, Baga, and other cultures from all around the world who understand the magical community building power of rhythm. So I want to invite you to find your passion, find your rhythm, and use that to serve others. Use that to be a connector of people and to connect with people. See, just as the skin of a drum vibrates, so do our intentions, and so do our bodies. And those intentions and those vibrations have a direct effect on other people. So you can be a connector. So I want to invite you, and I want to challenge you. Use your passions. Find your rhythm. <laughs> Be a connector of people and connect with as many people and connect to as many people as you possibly can for as long as you can, even if it takes you out of your comfort zone. So use your skills, your passion to connect others and connect to others and be a great connector. Thank you. <laughs>